The other thing is we've partnered with big players, dominant players, because our model is we cannot directly market. We are prohibited by the IRS from doing that, so we have to find these go-arounds to work with companies that not only have the uh, ability and the intent to pay us a royalty for using our brand and the willingness to sit down and design a product according to our specs, but they also have to pay the advertising costs to, to the customer. So there are just not a lot of folks out there who can bear all of those costs. And one of the things that I'm very interested in talking to people about is what are the other models that AARP can employ to start to figure out how to work with small companies. Um, most of these markets, high barriers to entry, slow to limited uh, new product development. You know, for God's sake, we're talking about it. You know, insurance uh, in, in many cases, and really not a huge amount of, of innovation. And when you get to these kinds of commodity products, the AARP brand was really the differentiator. So this is the model that has worked for us. This is the primary model that, that we use. The challenge for us now, and coming to uh, out to the valley for, for this event each year, as well as you know, maintaining very good relationships with Mary. Uh, you know, is, is to find out what the heck else is, is going on. Because the, this is not where the innovation is. The innovations in this room and elsewhere and AARP, given the mission that we have, has to figure out how to tap that. So here's something, you know, just to you know, tip my, my hat to uh, um, the title of, uh, of Steve's piece. You know, demographics really is, is the driver here, you know. And so what we're seeing is the growth of the 50 plus, you can see around you know 2012 uh, on that line, you know the, the 50 to 59 year olds. It's, it's 40 million people. That's more people than most countries, right? Uh, let alone all of the, the 50 plus, and that's just uh, that's just going to grow. And then of course the other dem demographic message is the diversity story, uh, particularly with regard to Hispanics. But it really doesn't start to explode for another 10 to 15 years, right? So it's growing and it's becoming more significant and it's, a, and it's way more significant than it was five to 10 years ago. But just in terms of time frame, as you think about where the opportunities are in these markets, one aspect to, you know, to the point that Mary made that it takes seven years for business to you know, get going, if you have that longer term view, getting it now and getting a foothold and being the uh, the, uh, the early entry player, there's opportunity. So, what are the 50 plus telling us? Well, the stories that we hear, first of all, that healthcare costs and other economic issues are cl clearly at the top of the list when it comes to people's concerns. And in fact, just as with the Great Depression, in the Great Recession, behavior is actually changing. And people are going back to the future with regard to thrift and savings. At the same time, there's really a widening gap between the things that are important, driven by economic concern, and the satisfaction for the future. There's a, a, a recently uh, in uh, McKinsey Quarterly, there was a really excellent article that you know uh, confirmed some of our, our own work. You know, which is that out of all the boomers, really only 25% of them are prepared for retirement. That is just incredibly scary unto itself. Another 25% of them, you know, have incomes of 15 to 20,000, and that's going to be the case, right? Net worth of 75k. This is this is really scary. But the really scary thing is that 50% in the middle, half of which think they have enough money to retire, and the other half, at least they know they don't. But at least, you know, but there's a big challenge there. So there are gaps. For me, gaps mean opportunity, and that's the way I would encourage you to, uh, to look at as well. The other thing is health and wealth are totally intertwined. Even in the healthcare debate in Washington right now, you will hear people are talking about universal coverage, but what's the focus? What is the thing that gets both sides of the aisle together? It's healthcare costs, because that's where the average person you know, is, is focused. That's where the outflow of dollars out of the pocket really is uh, occurring. Another thing we're hearing is stay independent. You know, Steve, uh, you know, had some, some data on this, with you, which I have some similar data on. Staying independent, aging in place is key. That's what people 
want to do. Technology. One, as Lori Orla will share with us in a, in a little bit, is playing to the aging in place market, but it's also being, it is the key to staying in touch increasingly with, uh, with family and friends. And then the last thing, and Steve and I did not talk about this in advance, uh, is that personal growth and education is really an interesting, you know, uh, opportunity out there where there are significant numbers, at, at least a 10% segment of the boomers, uh, who are looking at uh, continuing their education, kind of figuring out how to uh, achieve some type, some level of self-actualization, etc. So. This is just since uh, February uh, 2, and you can see that on the right, rising healthcare costs at the top, but you also have high prices, enough money, recession. These are the things that are really driving what people's uh, concerns are amongst the 50 plus. Um, and they're doing things differently. They're making fewer impulse purchases, staying at home, buying more store brands, shopping more at uh, mass merchandisers. And you see that the behaviors, the values of the behaviors, are really going back, kind of an echo of our, for some of us in the room, maybe great-grandparents, some grandparents, some parents, uh, who came out of the Depression, and out of that experience, it was cash only, it was savings, et cetera. And we're seeing kind of a, a, a recurrence of that um, in, in great numbers. This I loved uh, because people are just looking for the ways to get a better deal, right? But amongst the 50 plus who actually do remember when you did have coupons everywhere, now they're just getting them online, right? And if you go to coupons.com and other places, there's a lot of opportunity uh, to figure out how to ways for, for you to, to lower your, your costs. But people are using the internet to do this increasingly. So again, technology is, is, is a key 